Welcome to our review on modern advances in medicine. So what we need to do at the end of B6 is just to have a look and see how medicine is actually changing in the present time. So some of these new techniques that are now available to us. The first one is organ transplants. Now, what we find here is the level of complexity comes in to the fact that we've got to match the organ to the recipient. Otherwise, the body will actually reject it. So that just means that the body recognizes it as foreign tissue and your immune system then destroys your replacement organ. Obviously, not a good thing. So to help reduce the risk of rejection, then we do two things. Firstly, we carry out this process of tissue matching. So that makes sure that the donor organ is a similar tissue type to the recipient, thereby reducing the risk of the body recognizing it as foreign. And secondly, we use immunosuppressant drugs, which reduce the effect of the immune system. So it suppresses your immune system and therefore means it's not able to reject that organ. The second advance in medicine is the use of stem cells. Hopefully we remember a stem cell is an unspecialized or undifferentiated cell. And usually what we do is we will take these stem cells from embryos and we refer to those as embryonic stem cells. And the reason that we do that is that embryonic stem cells can actually differentiate into any cell type, whereas an adult stem cell can only differentiate into a limited number of cell types. One of the main sources of these embryonic stem cells is fertility treatments. As for what we use these stem cells for, first of all, we can use them for testing new drugs in terms of their safety and their effectiveness. But we are now also looking at the potential use of stem cells to reverse the damage that's been caused by diseases. So this could be things like using them for treating Parkinson's disease to generate new brain cells. It could be rebuilding bone or cartilage for people suffering with arthritis. We could use it to generate heart valves as replacements for ones that are faulty. So stem cells have potentially a huge number of uses in reversing damage that's already been caused by disease because we can just use it to create that missing bit of tissue. As much as there are so many potential amazing positives to do with our stem cells, there are of course some concerns about them. First of all, there are possible long-term side effects. There may be a risk of increased cancer. Now, we also have the possibility of rejection of foreign materials in the body. So despite the fact that there are obviously lots of benefits of stem cells, we still have these concerns. So if they were to ask you to give a balanced argument on it, don't just focus on the positives, make sure you bring in a couple of those concerns as well. The third advance in medicine we're going to look at is in the area of gene therapy. So gene therapy is where we're actually going to put a fully functioning allele into a cell that's got a faulty one. So what we could do here is use this to treat cystic fibrosis. So cystic fibrosis is caused by the faulty allele of the CFTR gene, and we can replace that faulty allele with the normal healthy allele. In order to carry this out, we first need to use a restriction enzyme, and that's going to cut the normal version of the gene from the DNA of a healthy person. We then produce lots of copies of that normal allele and insert those into the cells of a person with a genetic disorder using a virus as the vector. So that's going to carry our healthy allele into the cells that contain the faulty one. The big problem that we've got with this is actually inserting the allele into those target cells. Reasons for that, first of all, the healthy alleles may not go into every target cell we need them to. The healthy alleles may join chromosomes in a random place, so therefore they're not going to work properly because the alleles have to be in a specific location on our chromosomes. And the big problem we've got here is that the treatment is short lived. As long as those cells are alive, they will have the healthy allele in them. 
but as we know cells are constantly replaced in our body so as soon as those cells are replaced then we've lost the healthy allium we've just got the faulty ones coming back again one of the biggest advances in recent years has been through the completion of the human genome project now as a result of the information we've gained from the human genome project there's a whole range of medical advances now open to us first one being that we can locate the genes that may be linked to inherited diseases and the first step in being able to do something about them is to know where the source of the problem actually lies second is that we can develop drugs that directly target disease causing genes or their proteins thirdly we can develop new gene therapy treatments to replace faulty alleles will hit with healthy alleles and finally we can develop something called personalized medicines so these are targeted medications which have much greater success rates and fewer side effects than your regular medications hopefully at the end of this video you can now describe the disadvantages of organ transplants you can describe some uses of stem cells in medicines and the ethics that surround the use of stem cells you can describe the use of gene therapy in treating disease and also describe the advances in medicine that may be made as the knowledge of our human genome increases.